course, not to forget the bag itself that I've carried all this kit in, which is the Low Pro 450 Pro Tactic. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of it. I've had it a few years now, and it's not the most comfortable, especially when you're looking it up big fells or you're on long uh, walks uh, during the day. It does wreck your back a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. It's a heavy bag without much stuff in it, and then once you start putting the 70 to 200, the um, ATD or the EOS R and all the other lenses and all your other bits and pieces, it does get very heavy. As you can see, I've used it pretty well, kept it in decent condition, but I wouldn't recommend it to somebody who's looking for a decent bag to take on long fell walks with your camera gear. It's good for doing sort of shoots where you can just lug all your stuff in, lug all your gear in, take it and then you're not wearing it all day. That's, it's great, great storage bag, but for anyone who's wanting to do landscape photography and get out on the fells, then I wouldn't recommend this one, I'd go for something different. Right, so first up is the Canon EOS R, which is my main shooting camera, which I'm shooting this video on now, so obviously I can't show you and use it at the same time, so have you, I've got the box instead. So as you can see, I've got the mount adapter for the EF lenses, so I can use all my old lenses on this new camera. And this has been a big upgrade for my setup, getting this camera from the Canon 80D. So this, like I say, is my main shooting camera. It's I've had it for about a month now and it's absolutely fantastic. I'm liking all the features. I'm just getting to grips with it really, but so far so good. It's a great bit of kit. I know it's a couple of years old now and the R5 and the R6 have come out. But as I said in the previous video, this camera is all I need for my needs right now. So like I said, the Canon EOS R replaced the 80D. I had this for a good few years, it served me very well. Got some great shots with it, but it was just time for an upgrade. So this has been demoted to my second backup body. Especially for when days, it's always important to have a second camera because you never know what's going to happen. And with the EOS R, I only have a 1SD card slot. If anything does go wrong, for whatever reason, I've got this on hand to get some great images still. And it's... Uh, paired up with the 18-135mm lens which I use for most of my landscape shots especially if I want to go wide very underrated lens I've said it numerous times before this is a great lens if if you're in for a mid-level range DSLR and you need a landscape lens that isn't gonna break the bank or if you want to get the, um, the bundle with an ATD or something similar I would definitely recommend it it's a fantastic lens you get some great sharp images with it so next up for my ATD, um, which I'm going to get for the EOS R as well, is the battery grip. It adds a bit more of a bulk to the setup, but it just it feels better in your hands. So when you pair this up with the ATD, just show you quickly now. It just makes shooting portrait, especially orientation, so much easier. It just feels more natural. So I've got that on there, turn it on, and when shooting in portrait orientation, it just feels more normal. Instead of being over like this and it just feel, making your wrist feel a bit awkward, it just feels a lot better right there. And you still got all your function buttons there that you can use as well. And like I say, I'll be getting the battery grip for the EOS R in the new year, definitely, because it's especially for weddings or for portrait shoots in general. It's just so handy to have this battery grip. I can't recommend that enough. So another one of my lenses that I really like to use and is one of my favorites is the Canon 70 to 200 2.8 Mark III. Went for the 2.8 version because like I said before, I shoot weddings, so I need that extra few stops of light and it works fantastically well. You can get some absolutely fantastic images with this, not only for weddings and portrait stuff, but for landscape images as well. I like to punch in on my landscapes a lot of the times, take away all the distractions, and this lens does that for me perfectly. So I can bang this on the Canon US I like say because the adapter that I've got and use this. I've got so, some of my favorite shots that I've taken in the latest district have been with this lens. Like I say, it's great because you can take away all the distractions, punch into a landscape and just get the light that you want or the scene that you want. I can't recommend a telephoto lens enough. It's definitely worth being in your camera bag. Okay, next up we've got everyone's, well, most photographers' favorite lens, and that's the Nifty 50, 50mm 1.8. I think this is a great lens. I mean, look how 
it's tiny for starters, it weighs absolutely nothing and it's great for portraits. I've used this for weddings a lot over the years and it's an absolutely fantastic lens. I've also used it for um, B-roll now that I'm doing more video. It works really well and the fact you can get down to 1.8 and get some really nice depth of field with this lens for, the, for like say 100 quid, something like that, just over 100 pounds, it's absolutely brilliant. I think this should be in every photographer or videographer's camera bag. It's well worth the money. You get so many great shots out of it and like I say for just over £100 it's a no brainer and I believe that Canon have or are bringing out the RF version of this glass so I'm really looking forward to giving that a try because this glass for the EF lens mount is fantastic like I say so it'll only be getting better with the RF version so I'm looking forward to that I think it's just over £200 the new RF version so a little bit more money but still a bargain and you're going to get amazing results with it. So moving into the video side of my camera bag, I have the DJI Ronin S gimbal and this has been a fantastic purchase for me in 2020. Because I started moving into doing video work, this enabled me to get some really silky smooth footage. Handheld video can work great but for the videos that I'm shooting, for example the local football coach Corey, I need to be able to get around his training sessions and get smooth footage i won't be able to do that handheld really so being able to get the cameras onto this gimbal and being able to basically circle the training sessions get it from every angle and get smooth footage is a massive bonus i know they've recently brought out newer versions of this but i don't see a reason to upgrade i really like this i like how it's set up really simple the controls are nice and easy I just I think it's a great gimbal and I've got no reason to change. So for hard drives that I use, I've always used Seagate drives. These are external hard drives which aren't the fastest compared to SSDs, but I that's what I use. I've got uh, one terabyte, one which has everything from the day one of starting photography. And I've recently purchased a backup the four terabyte backup to give me a lot of space because ever since I've started video I've always used up a hell of a lot more memory so that was a purchase that was required because I pretty much maxed this out I couldn't get anything else onto it so when I'm editing my images or videos I like to use these Sony headphones I really like them the fact that they're all matte black as well is right up my street but the performance of them is great I like to get editing put some music on when i'm doing my images or a podcast or when i'm listening to playback on videos I like to use these the noise cancelling on them is fantastic reduces all the distractions and it means i can crack on get editing and get everything done a bit quicker so i do a bulk of my editing i would say at least 95 percent of it on this macbook pro i bought it a couple of years ago and i just think it's great these are the specs here and like I say, I do a bulk of it on this laptop. Because I'm in the Apple ecosystem of an iPhone and the iMac, it makes life so much easier transferring files between the um, different devices. I don't have to go into a Dropbox or a Google Drive and just do straight airdrop. Works fantastic. Especially for Instagram posts, I'll edit my images, export them to my desktop and then straight airdrop to my phone and then I can post them. And it's the same with the videos. It's absolutely fantastic, nice and easy and it's a great bit of kit. So the last big item in my camera bag is what I'm using for this overhead shot which is the three-legged thing Winston tripod. It is a bit of a chunky tripod but it's fairly light. I don't mind the weight of it and it's because the fact that I used a cheap Amazon tripod for a number of years. It was falling to pieces, it died a death, I ran it into the ground so it was time to invest in something decent so I went with a three leg thing Winston after looking at numerous reviews and asking people who I knew who had this tripod what they thought of it and it has not let me down at all. So that's a run through of the main parts of my camera bag, the camera bodies, the lenses, that kind of things, what I used to edit my images and videos. Now it's just accessories so I've got a bag of spare batteries. I mean, I'm never going to run out of battery power as long as I keep these powered up, which I do. And then I've got the SD card case, which isn't the best. Again, I got this when I first started out and I think I'll get a hard case to, for a bit more protection from SD cards. And then for long exposures, I've got the Lee 
filter kit, which as well as the, I've got the adapter somewhere in my bag, I've got the, uh, the um, filter holder, and then the Lee Big Stopper, which again is great for long exposures. So I've got that bit of glass there. I can't believe I haven't broken this to be honest with you, I've broken it so many times. But yeah, that's a great bit of glass for uh, long exposure photography. When I first started, that's what I was using all the time, going down to the um, Morecambe Bay and get some long exposures of the water coming in. I used to do that all the time, I haven't done that for a long time now, but uh, I do keep that in my bag just in case I get the urge to do some more exposure photography. So that is the run through of my main camera bag. Obviously I've got some bits and pieces in there like camera straps and cloths and cleaners for my cameras and my lenses, but them items are the main things that I used to shoot and edit with and carry with me at all times. So if you do like the video, give it a thumbs up, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Leave a comment below if what you think of my setup, if what you think it's missing and subscribe if you fancy it. I'll see you in the next video.